Welcome to the on-record portion of the Rockbridge Report. I'm Chelsea Gilman. Joining me today is United Way President Dr. Bob Glidden. Hello, Mr. Glidden. Greetings. I understand that before coming here, you were president at Ohio University. Could you speak a little bit about the transition from coming from Ohio University and how you ended up here in Lexington? Well, first of all, um, Lexington is a great place to be because of the higher education institutions and because it's a small town and you don't have to wait at traffic lights very long in Lexington. <laughs> and, and it's just a delightful, beautiful place. And we've known about Lexington for some years and that's why we, all of those reasons are why we chose to come to Lexington and we've enjoyed it very much. Okay, and how did you begin your work with United Way? Well, I was asked to be on the board uh, after I had been uh, in Lexington for uh, two or three years, I don't remember how long, and I'm now serving on my sixth year on, on the board, actually, and I'm the past president now. Uh, but uh, uh, I became in, involved in United Way because, first of all, I believe in the mission of United Way, and frankly, during the time that I was a university provost and president before that, I didn't have time to do the kind of community service that I think everyone should do. And so for me, this is a little bit of makeup work. Um, and can you talk a little bit about some of the services that United Way provides for the county and the people who need it here? Well, United Way is a, it was designed as a way to raise funds collectively uh, for a lot of different agencies and a lot of different causes. So right now United Way supports 19 different uh, service agencies uh, in the community, in Rockbridge County. Uh, and of those 19 agencies, they range all the way from uh, the, uh, the, the, what's now used to be the free clinic and now the health center uh, to RARA, the Relief Association, uh, to the transportation organization, RATS, uh, to uh, a smaller groups that deal with autism, autistic uh, children and that sort of thing, uh, to legal services for, for people who need public assistance for that and so forth. So it's a wide range of agencies. Part of United Way's purpose is to try to find out what the needs are and try to address the most critical needs and also to try to raise the resources to help those various agencies. Okay, um, and how do you feel United Way has been doing, have they been successful in reaching um, the large amount of people in the county who need it? Well, obviously we could reach more if we could raise more money. Uh, and, and we have been fairly consistent over the past five years of raising about $250,000 a year. We've had that goal for some time. Last year were the f was the first year in several years that we actually made the goal, but we've come very close every year, and the same will be true this year. I think we will make the goal uh, once again, but it's going to be uh, very close. Obviously, we could help more people if we had more money. We never have as much to distribute and help these agencies as we would like to have. Uh, but uh, our, our project in raising funds really starts in September of each year, carries through the fall, and then concludes around this time of, of year. Uh, and uh, just, just as a matter of interest to you, uh, about seven, two thirds to 70% of all of our funds come from people who give $500 or more. One of the things United Way would like to see happen is a lot more people who contribute something like a dollar a week. You know, a, a lot more people could do that. So part of our challenge is how do we reach people uh, to, to help them understand the need and, and to contribute in that fashion. Okay, great. Um, I understand that now there is also a push to improve early childhood education and literacy. literacy well, yes, rates. Let, let me give you a little background about that. Uh, we, United Way tries to address current needs and that's been the case for many years. It occurs to us that we also should be looking to the future and say what difference can we make in the long-term future? Uh, how do we help people stay out of poverty so they don't get into that kind of situation uh, in the first place? And that's where we come to the uh, idea of trying to focus on preschool education, early childhood education. We know that the key for people to be uh, not poverty stricken is to be educated. And they have a lot better chance for a good job and a happier life. And so uh, in order for that to happen, a student has to have a good start in school. Our concern is that if you're a youngster and you start to school and you don't know the alphabet or you don't know even the colors or, or whatever, you come to school and you're, you're at a great disadvantage and it's apparent to you, even though you don't maybe say a lot at that age about it, you know, no one wants to feel uh, inadequate. 
And so we'd like to give everyone an equal, uh, I would say head start, that's the name of a formal program, of course, but mm -hmm. uh, toward reaching that kind of goal of everyone having the same kind of advantage uh, when they start to school. So for United Way's part, we are trying to change our focus a little bit to do all we can to make that happen. Now, can United Way do all of that? No, certainly not. But what we can do is try to bring together a lot of different organizations and agencies in Lexington and Rock, Rock, Rockbridge County um, that are doing something, try to find out what's being done, what's not being done, and then decide what are the priorities. Where should be the areas that we should focus on to make a difference for the future? So the whole, and we call that a com community impact model. How do we have an impact on the future of the community over the long term? So that's what we're turning to, and we're trying to do all of that without neglecting the 19 agencies we have been supporting. Now to be sure, many of those agencies are already involved in uh, has something to do with children and their education, their health and welfare, uh, and so forth. And that's all part of it, of course, the health and welfare part. So um, many of the agencies, we're just asking them to focus a little bit more specifically on this. Some of our other agencies, of course, it just doesn't fit them at all. For example, the, uh, the senior center. Uh, now, they, they might be able to help in some ways because sometimes the grandparents are taking care of children when they're little, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. But it's not really their cup of tea in the way that it would be some of the other organizations. Okay, great. Um, and what is kind of the, what would you like to see this program do if you had to put a success rate on it? Um, is there a certain percentage that you've seen thus far of children? <clears throat> we, have, we have said we would like to have, first of all, every child to be at a grade le reading level by the time they get to fourth grade. And certainly even we'd like to have them there by first grade. But we'd like to be certain that every child, you know, in elementary schooling, you have the elementary years and then you, and the primary years, and then you have the elementary years. And you'd like to be certain that by the time children get to fourth grade, they're really ready to begin studies in earnest. And that can't happen uh, if you can't read well. Uh, and if you're not, you know, uh, literate in terms of uh, mathematics and numbers and, and so forth. So um, we, we would like to have everyone up to speed by that time. Now, a lot of that will start earlier. And while we have some programs in the county of now we have several areas where they have Head Start. We have the preschool on a bus, but it doesn't reach everyone. And part of our concern is that for this to be successful, we have to be able to reach the parents of those children also. We know that if parents care and show interest, even if the parents are not highly educated themselves, if they show interest in their child learning, it makes a lot of difference to that child in, in, in his or her success. And so uh, part of what we want to do is to make certain that we have uh, every child up to a certain reading level at first to first grade and then fourth grade. Okay, and can you talk a little bit more about how you plan to get the parents um, on board, the parents of these children on board to make sure your vision... <laughs> That's a good question. I could have asked that of you because we don't know yet. Uh, we, we will be, as I said a minute ago and didn't follow up very well, that United Way can't do all of this by itself. What we can do is try to bring people together. We will form something called the Community Education Coalition which will involve leaders in the community from various aspects of the community, including the schools, by the way. We've been working closely with, with the schools in Rockbridge County and in Buena Vista and in Lexington City uh, thus far uh, on this, and they're all very much, they're very excited about it. Uh, so so we, we have to be sure that, that everyone is uh, on the bus, so to speak, uh, in order for, for this to work. Okay. Um, I do, I understand that you're also a part um, participate with the Robert E. Lee Church. Can you talk a little bit about some of the outreaches that you see churches do as well in the community? That's a very good question because we hope that the, the faith community will be involved in this effort. Obviously some churches in the community are already doing a lot to help uh, people in poverty or, or various agencies in the community. Our Lee Church is one of those uh, certainly, but other churches as well. And, and certainly for some of the churches that will be the avenue by which we reach the parents to convince them that this is a that this is a good idea, and of course some of these things are a little bit sensitive. You know, if if you're if you're a parent, uh, you don't want to be treated as though you're not up to everyone else. 
And so we'll be sensitive about all of that. But because we have a lot of different agencies now doing different things, one of the first things we'll try to do is take inventory of who's doing what. And including the faith-based community in all of that will be part of it. So that uh, we, there's probably a lot going on, support from churches that I, certainly I don't know about or maybe anybody in the United Way. And that's part of what the Community Education Coalition will do, is try to take an inventory and find out all the different uh, aspects of early learning that are going on now. Okay. And is there any worry that um, with this focus on early childhood ed education that some other issues that need to be addressed might kind of get left behind? Or um, do you plan to just put more focus on this but continue to focus? Uh, on yes, the latter. Uh, obviously, we've thought uh, long and hard about how, what we can do to not leave behind all the things we've been supporting. In time, once people understand if we can have some success with the early childhood learning, we hope that we can raise more money specifically for that. And, and, and so it would be nice if we could, in, a, in several years, get from 250000 to $350,000, for example, in the community. And this community is very capable of that, very frankly, if we can convince more people of, that what we're doing uh, is, is important. So yes, we have been concerned about that. Our, our initial emphasis is to try to continue to support, although in some instances it may be slightly less, so that we can put the money into this other effort. But in some cases, it's not money that's the answer. Some, in some cases, it's attention to an issue and focus on an issue by agencies that are already doing certain things and finding out where the gaps are, because maybe you can change your emphasis just a little bit to fill some of those voids. Okay, great. Thank you so much. That's all we have time for today. This has been the on-record portion of the Rockbridge Report. I'm Chelsea Gilman. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you.